Hello and welcome to another ARC tutorial. Today we're going to talk about how to get unlimited resources from gotchas so you'll never have to touch another tree, rock, or metal node again. Gotchas are easily one of the most difficult creatures to deal with because they have emotions, making them very picky when it comes to certain things. But if you don't already know about gotchas, they turn food into resources via gotcha crystals. Afterwards, you can open the gotcha crystals to collect the resources within. It sounds simple, but there's a bit more to it than you might expect, so let's break this down into categories. I do just want to mention that you'll see some gameplay with what look like tech force fields around the gotchas, and that's because of the S Plus mod. Everything I'm teaching you works with non-modded vanilla arc, so please don't panic if you see anything that's not in the base game. I'll explain what problems the mod solves once we get to it, but every arc player on console and PC will be able to do the things I'm mentioning in this tutorial. And with that out of the way, let's talk about taming a gacha, because all of this info is useless if you can't get one in your possession. Gachas have a unique taming method in which they pick up items you drop on the ground and eat them, causing a taming HUD to appear. Gachas eat almost anything you throw at them, but prefer greenhouse structures for taming. The stack size of the item you're dropping is important, because when a wild gacha picks something up, it eats the whole stack in one go, so it's generally a good idea to drop lots of whatever item you're using to increase the speed at which it's tamed. You'll need about 10 greenhouse structures to tame a level 150, and for that, I use walls since they're cheaper. You'll find that sometimes wild gachas don't pick up the items you drop in front of them, and that's because of how their emotions work, so let's talk about that. Gachas are solitary creatures, and as such, they get sad if there are other gachas around them. Unless Unless the other gacha is of opposing gender. This means you can have one male and one female gacha next to each other without either of them being sad. When gachas are sad, they won't produce gacha crystals or allow you to tame them until they're happy again. Typically, they don't become happy again until either a lot of time has passed or they're reintroduced to another gacha of the opposite gender. You can always tell when a gacha is sad based on their behavior and expression. Sad wild gachas will make a noise and turn away when an item is dropped in front of them. Similarly, sad Sad tamed gachas will have a huge frown and turn their head away from you. You can still have a fleet of happy gachas in your possession though, as long as each mating pair is at least 14 foundation lengths away from each other, for a total of two gachas per 14 foundations. As a side note, the gachas emotion mechanic is negated by these tech force field looking things from the S Plus mod. They're called S Plus Gacha Gavagers, and they allow multiple gachas to be close to each other without being set, meaning these five gachas produce an absolute insane amount of resources and loot. These chests here are from about 24 hours of gacha production and fund the vast majority of my crafting needs, and they are full. Which actually leads me to the next category, production. The gacha's production mechanic is what makes them so useful, so it's important to understand how it works. Each gacha can produce a variety of resources, from common fiber to ultra rare element dust. There's no way to know what you're gonna get from wild gachas until they're tamed, so be prepared to tame at least a male and a female so you can breed them and keep rolling for good production. I'll talk more about that in the breeding section, but if you're only looking to tame one or two gachas, it's important to find one that'll help you fill gaps in resources you use a lot of. For example, on the Monarchy server, I have a shop, and I use a ton of fiber to craft the items I sell. So the first gacha I got, I set to produce fiber, saving me from constantly having to farm it. If you find yourself using tons of metal, which most players do, then take the time to either find a metal producing gacha or breed one. You can see what a gacha produces by going to the production menu in its radial wheel. From there, either select a specific resource or pick any to produce any of the items listed. They won't produce anything at all unless they have something to eat, which we'll talk about shortly, but gachas don't just produce resources. They also produce quality loot like Mastercraft Riot Gear and shotguns depending on their crafting skills, so let's break that down. Crafting skill dictates how much of a resource the gacha will produce, as well as how likely it is to produce loot. I haven't done any of my own testing, but according to several resources on the interwebs, it looks like 160% crafting skill is the sweet spot for maximum resources. Essentially, this means that each gacha crystal will contain contain as much of a resource as possible. Anything over 160%, you'll start to find more loot than resources, all the way up to 260% if you can manage to get it that high. At that percentage, you'll be getting Ascendant and Mastercraft gear more than anything else. 
You can use snow owl pellets to boost production times and the odds of the gacha dropping fantastic gear as well. But understand that it won't produce crystals on owl pellets alone, which brings us to the next category, feeding. Gachas are monstrous eaters. They can devour anything you give them in an absurdly short amount of time, which means you'll need a reliable way to keep them fed if you want them to keep producing for you. It's universally accepted that plant Y traps are the best way to feed your gachas, not only because they're renewable, but because the gachas produce crystals very effectively with this food source. Pair those with snow owl pellets and you'll be drowning in gacha crystals. Like, seriously, good luck managing it. You can find plant species Y seeds very easily by using the Therese tickle attack on plants or by harvesting these purple flower patches. Once you have a few seeds, you can plant them and they'll start to produce more seeds. The more you have, the more you can plant and the more you can feed your gachas, so it's worth it to find them. If you need help with farming, click the pop-up, but other than that, the only other thing we have to cover is breeding and the challenges that come with raising gachas specifically. Breeding gachas works like every other mammal with a few exceptions. Every time you breed gachas, there's a dice roll that happens in the background to determine which resources the new gacha will produce. This means that your first baby could produce metal or organic polymer, but it also means that you could breed dozens of babies before getting one that produces something you actually want. On the bright side, you can see what a baby will be able to produce as soon as it's born, meaning you can either take the time to raise it or kill it off right away. Additionally, baby gachas want to pick up and eat everything around them, even things that'll kill them, which means you have to be super careful with babies you want to keep. Not only are baby gachas super dumb, but babies must also remain rendered, otherwise they'll enter stasis and starve to death. This means that if you have to leave your nursery or log off, just cryo the baby to prevent that from happening. Because gachas eat so much, baby gachas will overeat meat, even if they're not hungry, which causes you to use far more meat than is necessary. To avoid this, put some meat in their inventory every so often to make sure they eat only what they need. Once they hit juvenile, they can eat out of troughs and will behave normally. Alternatively, you could simply feed the babies nothing at all. They naturally regenerate food and health, so as long as there's nothing in their inventory and they're far away from anything they could pick up, including feeding troughs, you can raise them from 0% to 100% without any food at all. Ultimately, it's up to you how you want to raise them, but they're super finicky and weird, which makes them one of the coolest creatures in the game. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing for more content like this. Thank you so much for your time today and we'll see you in the next video.